Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Seving. Today we're going to do a quilting play-by-play -play for my latest quilt design, Herringbone Revisited. For this quilt, we took a pattern that was in my first book, Simple Quilts for the Modern Home. It was originally designed for yardage and only in one size. And so I reworked it and changed the sizing up some so that way we could use it with fat quarters and we could do it in multi-size. So you can definitely bust your stash with this. We use Vibrant Light from Clothworks and we do have kits available of that if you're not a member of our Stash with Stephanie Club. Um, but it is a great club to join because you get 10 fat quarters in the month in the mail each month and you get a discount on that and then you get a pattern that I've designed specifically to highlight that collection. I really love this one because it really allows each fabric to shine on its own and just create this really cool riot of color and you get access to all the previous Stash with Stephanie patterns. That is over a $300 value now that you can get for free as soon as you join and you get 20% off any of the fabrics that we have featured in Stash with Stephanie. So if you see this quilt and you're like, I want in on that, I wanna be part of that, join the club. And then on your second purchase, the website will know that you're a member and you'll be able to save 20% on this quilt kit. You'll be able to get the pattern for free and you'll be able to download a bunch of other fat quarter friendly patterns for free as well so you can bust your stash. And you get a discount on my two Fat Quarter books, Fat Quarter Patchwork Quilts and Fat Quarter Workshop. So it's a great club to be a part of. Members got uh, first dibs on this fabric as well. And let me tell you, they took advantage. Um, a lot of this has, has gone out the door um, before we released everything to everyone else. And so it is really gorgeous fabric this month and I'm super excited about it. So for the quilting play-by-play, -play, what I do is we put a GoPro on our my long arm handlebar and I watch back that footage and show you what I'm doing and tell you why I'm doing it. In this one, I quilted it the same way I quilted my original and that was by following the direction of the offset herringbone pattern. And if you are intimidated by this, it's actually super easy. The majority of it is strip piece. We've got a piecing video tutorial that you can watch on how to do this. Um, it goes together really fast. Mine was done in, in four days. So it's, it's super fast. It, it looks a lot harder than it actually is. Um, but I really love it. My goal is always to try to accent the fabric and the design of the quilt. So I chose a nice light gray thread so that way it would kind of blend into the background and you would just see the texture and the thread wouldn't be competing with the fabrics. And then I quilted straight down the center of each um, piece here. So that way we would be following the texture. We would just help accentuate this really cool herringbone design. And then I traveled in the seam column whenever I needed to come down here and then come up and go over. So that way I was able to do one entire pass and work my way across doing first the fat quarter strips and then the background. And it took me about six and a half, seven minutes per strip to do it. So it really was a very fast quilt, um, quilting job. So as far as ruler work goes, that's about as simple as you can get, unless you're just doing straight, straight line quilting. I wanna talk a little bit about the ruler. We don't sell these. You can check them out at peaceandquilt.com. Natalia Bonner does this, and it might be kind of hard to see, but it is really cool. It has a straight edge and then also a curved edge up top. Those are the ones that I use the most. There are curved edges on the side. I'm gonna be honest, I've never used those. Um, but I really do like this curved edge. It was really nice when you wanna kind of go inside of things. And this is great because there are numbers on it that I used here. So we've got, um, if you just have your ruler foot right up against the edge, that's gonna be a quarter inch. So that's not marked on there, but it's half, three quarter, one inch. And those are the ones that I used here because I was able to quilt one inch to go straight down the center and half inch to go straight down the center of this one. And that worked really, really well. And it's once you get the hang of keeping your ruler template next to your ruler foot on your machine, you can quilt any shape you want and you will look like a pro. I love ruler work because it makes me look like a better quilter that I am. So let's see how that works next. 
All right, so you can see that I'm getting started here. I'm going straight down the center of that. And I've got that one inch mark on the ruler lined up with that seam line. So that allows me to just go straight down and hit where that point is. Now I've got to travel to the middle of the next one. So I just go up a little bit and I stitch right next to that ditch. I press my seams open, which actually I feel gives me a lot more uh, flexibility when I'm doing quilting, but I, I definitely want to stitch next to that seam because you don't want to go straight down the center if you can avoid it. So now here I'm going down to hit the next part and then I'm just gonna keep continuing going on. Now the four in one ruler was just a little bit too short to go the entire length of these strips. So I do pause and I completely stop with my needle down about midway through. So that way I can move that ruler without having any problems and having it look like anything other than a straight line. Um, one thing that you kind of want to keep in mind when you're doing this is there's kind of a sweet spot. You don't really ever want to go all the way to the edge. You kind of want to stick in between. Like this is your sweet spot kind of in the middle because if you go to the edge, it's kind of harder to hold it where you want it to be. But I just love, I put my pinky on the side and that just helps me kind of hold everything in place where I need it to go. But you're just gonna keep traveling back and forth, um, kind of going up a little bit, down a little bit. And as long as you come to like a full stop with your needle down, you won't have any weird little jogs in here and you'll be able to pick right back up. Now I am working on an APQS Lenny. It does have a stitch regulator. So it doesn't matter if I slow down. It doesn't matter if I stop in the middle of it. I'm still gonna have nice even stitches. If your machine doesn't have a stitch regulator, then you're gonna have your own challenge with that to make it look nice. You might wanna try to find a longer ruler. Um, but I wanna talk a little bit about the ruler foot here. So that ruler foot is a full circle going around the needle. And it is on the outside of it all around and exactly a quarter inch away from the inside of that needle, which is what you want. And long arm quilting rulers are different than the quilting rulers that you use to cut templates with. It's a thicker acrylic, it's a full quarter inch thick. And that way you can put it right up next to that ruler foot and it's not gonna hop on top of it and hear that awful crunching sound um, of metal on acrylic that is no good and you're in danger of, of busting needles if you do that. All right, so we made it all the way across and now we're gonna repeat that, this time going in the background strips. Now this is a thinner strip. So for this one, I lined up that half inch line on the ruler. Now this is a little weird to kind of get used to because like there's no quarter inch because like I said, the outside of that ruler foot is the quarter inch. And so that's kind of a weird thing to get used to do, um, thinking of is that there's no quarter inch mark on your ruler. Um, but as long as you kind of keep that on top, you're good to go. Now you kind of have to learn what feels good for you with ruler work. For me, I'm right-handed, and so I'm driving the machine with my right hand and I'm holding the ruler with my left hand. So I find it easiest to maneuver everything when I'm going down at an angle like this for it to be below. And then when I'm traveling up and down, I have my ruler to the left like this. And then when I'm going up and to the side, I am having it kind of behind. And for me, I'm able to hold the ruler as steady as possible when I do that. Whenever I have to put it in another space, it doesn't work for me, but it might be different for you, especially if you are maybe a, a right-handed or a left-handed person. You might just have to experiment with that and figure out what is most comfortable for you. The other thing that's a little weird to get used to is whenever you're lining up that ruler, you're always lining it up like a quarter inch away. So I'll show you what that means here. So we're coming up here and we've got everything coming to the middle. And now we have to travel up or to that angle. So I'm coming down to the middle here and I've got an angle away from that. So wherever you are angling, you have to remember that the ruler is gonna be a quarter inch away from wherever you want that thread to actually be. Um, but once you get the hang of it, there's no shortage of different templates and rulers that you can get for your long arm. You can also use these on your home sewing machine. Um, this is not one I would recommend for your home sewing machine because it is rather large. So if you had like a sit down mid arm or a very, very large throat plate, 
then I think you would be okay with it. But this one is best for the long arm, but there are a bunch that are designed for your home sewing machine as well. You just have to make sure that you get a ruler foot that's designed for your machine so that way you can use it on your home sewing machine as well. Um, I really love them. And this is, like I said, this is kind of a more basic one. It's, it's like a step above from straight line quilting, but it really allows me to put everything right where I wanna go. So here we're gonna watch it just in fast forward. Um, and you can see how that goes just so much. It's, it's a lot of fun. It was just really a really fun thing because I can just accentuate that design of the piecing without worrying about um, breaking thread. And I mean, that's the main thing. You wanna find a path where you can go across without having to break thread if you can avoid it because it means less work for you when you're finishing your quilts up. And also it just makes it go a lot faster. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that quilting play-by-play. -play. If you've never seen ruler work before, I hope that this gets you interested in giving it a try. Like I said, you can do it on your home sewing machine as well. Um, the process is a little bit different because you're moving the ruler and the quilt at the same time. Um, we do have a video that shows you how to do that using straight line quilting. Um, but on the long arm, I just love it. I just absolutely love it. And I use it whenever I have the time to do it. You can get super fancy with it. You can do all kinds of really cool things um, if you have the time to do it. Cause it does take a little bit longer than like a standard all over free motion quilting, but man, does this look sharp and good. And I love how this turned out. All right, if you haven't, go ahead and check out Stashing with Stephanie. It's our subscription club where you can get a fat quarter bundle every month that has fabrics like this in it. And then you get first dibs on getting additional fabric if you wanna turn your bundle into a full quilt kit because you really like it and you want to have that full kit that month. You can also get background, yardage, do whatever you want with it. You get access to all the free patterns and um, special discounts on additional fabric plus the book. So lots of really good things. If you're trying to quilt on a budget right now, it's a really good way to do it because you're gonna save on every piece of fabric that's featured in the bundle every single month and then you get the free pattern. So you get an idea on what to do with it. I always do my best to come up with something that lets the fabric live its best life. And I think that this is really an, a fun way to use Vibrant Life. Um, it's a digital print from Clothworks and it is just a, a really fun riot of color. The original quote for this was in Shell Rummel. It was very pastel. Um, calming colors so it's really fun to see it kind of live a new life with totally different fabrics and a little bit different sizing um, so it's super fun i really enjoyed it and i hope you guys do too check out stashing with stephanie and until next time happy quilting cool